Today, I am joined by Rosemary Gige. Purpose essentially, it is the intent for which God created you. Have you ever reached a point in, in, in your life and you began to say, is this all there really is to my life? You know, you, you know there is more to, there is more or, or meaning. I, or I keep praying for a door to open. I feel like I'm waiting for something. You're, you're waiting for something, you're pushing, you want to push into something, mm -hmm. but you're just not clear what that is. If I can get something that would satisfy me more, fulfill me more, bring me more joy. Some people by then normally are even ready to take a cut. Now, there's one challenge with purpose. Mm -hmm. And like just like you've mentioned in your case, mm -hmm. you were working in mm -hmm. a certain environment and you felt this is not yeah. what you, it is, was not fulfilling to you. Mm -hmm. But you see, you were an adult then. Mm -hmm. yeah? mm -hmm. Most of us and most of the people we speak to, it's the same case. Mm -hmm. Others were working in the banking institution mm -hmm. and they learned that no, my purpose is in teaching mm -hmm. and so okay, on. Yeah. And so on. Mm -hmm. Why is it that we are finding out our purposes mm -hmm let's say later <laughs> in our lives yeah it's Why a good question it? that's yes. a very very good question um when you start talking about purpose and parenting and bringing up children and uh, how people can catch this much earlier uh, for me the conversation uh, surrounds a couple of things mm -hmm. number one like we said purpose clarity must involve god mm -hmm. but very few of us engage with God, walking with God, knowing God, and maturing spirit, spiritually from a very tender age. Mm -hmm. We go to Sunday school, we are taught Sunday school stuff. Then we grow up, we join a main service where we go sit back and we just receive someone's every Sunday. Mm -hmm. And the majority of people in that, in that space of life, when you're growing adolescents, teens, and even a young adults, most people are busy just looking for an education. Mm -hmm. Pursue you. The way we pursue our academics is perfect. Supposing we were to pursue God like that from a tender age, like the way we are seeking grade A yeah. is the way we are seeking grade A with God in knowing Him, in working with Him from the age of 5, 10, 20, so that you can attain a level of maturity with God, so that you can download from God all this information about who He is, why he created you, why you're here on earth, we would clarify purpose very, very early. And I can give you the, uh, an, uh, one of the examples for me that stands out. Miles Monroe, mm -hmm. uh, the late, yeah. is somebody who, he says he started reading the Bible for himself as tender as, as the age of 13. He, at the age of 13, he was teaching adults stuff they could not comprehend because he was reading the Bible from cover to cover that young. Mm -hmm. And so he, he had a depth of God and a depth of knowledge that, that pushed him into purpose clarity very, very young. Mm -hmm. So from the majority of us, number one, we are disconnected from, the, for, from our relationship with God. Mm -hmm. Actually, most of us get saved a whole lot much later in our lives. Yeah. And even in terms of just, you know, daily reading of the Bible, it's not even, a, even for, for born again Christians, even today, even as adults, it's a struggle for many people to read the Bible every day. So number one, our walk with God is very weak from a tender age. Mm -hmm. Number two, the world around us is working on us to disconnect us from ourselves. Uh, the Bible says that above all, we should guard our hearts because out of our hearts comes the issues of, of life. Yes. From that tender age, the things that people begin to experience at, a, at an age that they don't know how to guard their heart begins to break them. Yeah, there, there's a lot that happens, kids teasing each other, Parents not understanding how to bring up their children in a way that they don't break them. In fact, unfortunately, the first point of breakage happens inside the house. Yeah. Your own parents speaking to you things they shouldn't speak to you, uh, to you. insults, nini, even their discipline it is done in a manner to make you think, I can't amount, uh, amount to much. You know, I'm not good enough. So most people begin to break at a very tender age. And when the heart is broken, you begin to disconnect from yourself. Because you begin to get the perception, nothing good can come out of me. I am not good enough. So you, you begin to disbelieve what you carry. And that happens 
and, and actually even for many adults. And many I think people, it goes on even in high school. Even, with the displays wow, in, even in, in high school. Oh, yeah. And even between, between peers, mm. there's a lot that happens. The competition, the, the, the teasing, the, the, the fight, you know, all of that, that. That space is actually, in terms of emotional wholeness, uh, that, that space is usually very toxic. I and mean, once you get out of high school, mm. then it's in the social media. And it's in the social media. Some people, by the way, are depressed mm. right now in the social media. And, and many people have lost self-esteem over the years. They have really departed from their original authentic selves. And because of that, they are highly disconnected and can't clarify purpose. Because yes. one of the... Yeah. yeah, so they're disconnected from the maker. And then they're disconnected from themselves. Yeah, and from themselves. Exactly. And so, until they overcome these things, yes. they cannot tap yes. from the creator exactly. to get their purpose. Exactly. And, and also, another critical uh, element in terms of purpose clarity, you need to be very much in touch with yourself. Very in touch with yourself. There's a level of understanding self, self-awareness that is essential so that God can build revelation upon that mm -hmm. to help you understand why you're here in actual fact many people who have walked the journey of purpose and whom god walks the journey of purpose he takes them through first a process of quite a depth of understanding of self so that when he says you're here to do this they understand they, they already understand oh this is the object so its purpose is is this mm -hmm. yeah so when you break away from that level of self-awareness even when God is talking to you and telling you what your purpose, you are disconnected, Kabisa. You're not on the same page. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And you've introduced a very important angle, mm -hmm. you know, in the process to, you said, purpose awareness. Mm -hmm. Self awareness. Self awareness. Mm -hmm. So that means then, if we are bitter, mm -hmm. or if we are hurt, mm -hmm. with hurt we have not dealt with, yes. or we are depressed, yes. then we are nowhere close to identifying our purpose mm. until we resolve these things. It is important. Actually, uh, for me, uh, God took me through a very intense process of self-renewal at the same time as he was taking me through this, the purpose clarity process. Mm. The truth of the matter is, if a vessel is broken, then purpose will leak. <laughs> its purpose oh. will leak. Okay. So like if I give you a cup of tea, yeah. And the, the cup broken, is broken. And the purpose is to the, hold tea. The, the purpose is to hold tea. The yeah. tea will leak. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it will not uh, achieve its full purpose, mm -hmm. so to speak. So there's a lot of um, there's a there's a huge linkage between your wholeness, purpose clarity, and purpose delivery. Mm -hmm. And like you're saying already, you have beef. There's a lot of uh, turmoil. Turmoil yeah. within that that is stopping you even from hearing God even from connecting with yourself at a healthy, in a, in a healthy manner so that uh, you can begin to bring out the issues of life that you know, are propagating this conversation about clarity of purpose and delivery of purpose. Mm. So it is critical that people deal with the breakage, the brokenness and attain a level of wholeness and reconnect with themselves and then of course at the same time, people need to, to connect maker. connect to the maker because how are you going to you, was, yeah. yeah how are you going to download this information if you're not connected mm. yeah wow mm. that's very powerful mm. I think we wanted to discuss purpose mm. but I think we've ended up discussing what we need to do mm. you know how we need to prepare ourselves exactly. you know exactly. to, to get our purpose exactly. to download our purpose. exactly and just to add that in terms of why in, we are discovering so many years later um, one of the things that uh, parents can do to help their kids in this journey like I said number one make sure you're not the ones breaking their hearts because mm. the heart needs to be whole their mind then don't forget that when your heart is broken your mind begins to break because you begin to get different perceptions yeah. about God yourself other people the world life generally and all those become blocks mm that hinder the process of purpose clarity. So yeah. a parent needs to make sure that number, they are the first number one protector of their children's hearts. Mm. At the same time, because you cannot protect somebody's heart effectively as they themselves can do, mm. you need to teach your child to guard their own heart. Yeah. I don't think that's a conversation many parents have with their kids. No. And that is why many kids, oh, people just generally grow with, uh, with, with taking in everything. 
yeah. and getting broken by everything because you don't know how to guard your heart. So if a parent can understand, number one, I shouldn't participate in breaking my child's heart. Number two, I should teach them to guard their own hearts. Yeah. yeah so that as, as they grow up, these issues of life do not come to break that space and cause a disconnection with self and with God and with others and, and with life more generally. The second thing is that, uh, of course, definitely at the same time, the parent should teach the child to commune and fellowship with God. Yeah. I think parents are leaving these two schools mostly, uh, CRE and all that, and churches, Sunday school and all that. Yeah. But I think a parent has a, the primary responsibility of introducing their own child to God mm -hmm. and teaching them how to commune with God and fellowship with God so that they can attain the level of spiritual maturity they need at the very earliest possible yeah. and create that foundation for purpose. The other thing, of course, many parents at our Unfortunately, I think it's changing nowadays, thankfully, but uh, the former generations, they were not appreciative of the gifts and the talents of most kids yeah, because of yeah. the academic narrative. Yeah. Okay, some are too science, biology, nini, get the grades. Yeah. When you talk about music or art or, you know, drama and all those things, those are extracurricular yeah, yeah, you activities. You can do that on your own free time. Yeah, you can do that on your own free time, but yeah. surely that's not a conversation for, a, for building a career. Yeah. The best thing that a parent can do to help a child clarify purpose early is to help them to appreciate number one help them identify their own natural capabilities what they are easily given to do yeah. and nurture those mm -hmm. nurture them yeah yeah encourage your child come on into a music let them learn music mm -hmm. let them just grow their capabilities that god has naturally endowed to them because the truth is those are the tools for purpose delivery those are tools for purpose delivery. So when you teach your child to grow in that space, you're bringing them as close as they can be yeah. to purpose clarity. Yeah. They are passions. Encourage them to pursue them. You're bringing them as close as they can be to purpose clarity. Then the other thing that uh, a parent should do is bring, uh, expose their child. Mm -hmm. Expose them into the spaces of what they really like, what they enjoy naturally. Uh, if it's music, if it's drama, if it's uh, art, whatever it is they enjoy expose them into that into those spaces to learn to to learn a lot more then the other thing that obviously parents totally neglect mm -hmm. and we have learned to look for this for ourselves in the, our adult lives yeah. is personal development mm -hmm. personal development yeah. we read all the biology all the chemistry everything but there is very little about self-awareness and personal growth you know the person inside the heart the mind and all that but there are many programs in town for kids so why not engage them in those so that they can begin to attain a level of self-awareness that builds a foundation for you know receiving yeah purpose clarity yeah yeah Thank you very much, Rosemary. Mm. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have today. Uh -huh. Asante san. Wow. Awesome. Awesome. Yes. Thank you for having me. Karibu it was a joy and a pleasure. Next time on Clean Money Wednesday. Today I have, do I qualify to say my learned friend? Uh, no, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. The way I practiced for this. <laughs> Omuga. Oguang Ongo. Yes. Intellectual lawyer. Intellectual property. Intellectual property. Are there, are there many of those in this country? We, we are a few. I think seven who, who, who are worth mentioning. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what is this intellectual property all about and how does, that, does it tie into wealth and even generational wealth? Nice. Uh, intellectual property and wealth. You cannot have meaningful wealth without identifying the intellectual property aspects. Wealth is built or is made up of two components. Mm -hmm. There is the form aspect of wealth and then there is the substance aspect of wealth. All wealth must be built on one thing, ownership. Yeah. And most of us we attach ownership to something that we can see tangibly. But more importantly, ownership that is of mentioning mm -hmm. is ownership of what you cannot touch. This is Clean Money TV.